Over the years I've shown you many cool and extremely useful electronic gadgets. Out of my over 625 videos, I only showed you one video inspection camera that works well and is affordable for the do-it-yourselfer. It's the unit here that I still use to this day, two and a half years later. A detailed review of this product can be found at the end of this video. Even though this older unit works well for most applications, it does lack certain features that newer inspection cameras have, and the video quality is not as good as a newer, higher-end video inspection camera like the one you see here, made by Teslong, model NTS 500. The NTS 500, depending on the camera that you choose to be used with the unit, can vary in price between $219 and $249. The first thing I'd like to do is briefly go over the differences between this newer unit and the older. This one over here has a four and a quarter inch LCD screen. This one over here has a five inch screen. The older unit over here has a battery door that you slide open and inside is an 18650 lithium ion cell to power the unit. This one typically comes with a 2600 milliamp hour. The NTS 500 has an internal battery that is not removable and it has a capacity of 3500 milliamp hours. This unit is designed to run between four and five hours and this one over here between three and three and a half hours. Of course, if you switch to a higher capacity cell than the 2600 milliamp hour cell that's included with the unit, you're going to have a longer run time. So the run times will be very similar between the two if you use a cell that has a capacity close to 3500 milliamp hours. Included with the older unit is this thicker cable I believe it's around 15 feet long or 5 meters. The cable itself, the ends, as well as over here where the camera is, is designed to be IP67 waterproof. So that means you could place it underwater up to 1 meter deep or 3 feet and you should not have water seeping into the cable. The unit itself is not IP67 waterproof like the cable. According to the manufacturer, this one here not only is the cable IP67 waterproof, but the entire unit is as well. You can see there's a rubber panel that pops open. There's a reset button, USB charging port, and you can see TF, and that's for the memory card. You have to insert the memory card into this. It is not included. With this unit here, it's already included, and they give you a 32 gigabyte card. Both of these units have cameras that have a 70 degree viewing angle. In a minute, we're going to be doing a comparison between the two cables and cameras. The older unit here has video quality 1920 by 1080. The frame rate is 15 frames per second, and the files that are created are high bit rate, around 14 megabits per second. Now, the interesting thing is even at that high bit rate, the video quality is not as good as the video quality from this one uses 1280 by 720, 30 frames per second, and the bitrate is around 7 kilobits or 7.5 kilobits, but the video quality is superior to the one over here. Each one of these units has an LED light mounted on the front. I'll turn it around just to show you. And you just push this right here. It may not look that bright on camera, but it is pretty bright. I measured the intensity, and I'll show you in a minute. And this one over here has it in the same place, but it's much dimmer. Using this light intensity meter placed one inch from the LED strip lights, I got a reading of 6,250 lux for the test long and 1,850 for the older unit. So a big difference in intensity between the two. You can see the test long has this metal insert. If you wanted to clip something onto the unit, and here's a look at the backside. And then we have the opposite side with the button that turns the LED strip light on and the port where the camera screws into. Now over here on the left is the older and over here is the newer. This one here is much thinner. This one here is thicker. This one is highly bendable. It keeps whatever shape that you put it in. And this one here more or less has a flexibility to it. You see it doesn't stay where you put it. This one, no matter where you put it, throughout the entire length, it holds that position. 
If we take a closer look at the camera on the end of the cable and compare it to this one, you can see how much thicker this one is compared to the one on the right. Approximately 8.4, and this one over here is only 5.3 millimeters, which is incredibly small, especially if you need to get into a very tight space. This type is the way to go. If you decided to purchase the newer unit, you would have the option of three different camera types. You can have a single lens, so you'd have the camera on the very end with six ultra bright LED lights just like the other camera. So you'd be looking forward. You can also choose a dual lens option. So you can have a camera lens at the end as well as on the side. It's extremely useful. And you can switch between the two cameras. You choose the one you want to use. And there's also an autofocus version. The autofocus version is a much larger diameter. The diameter is going to be around 14 millimeters or 9 sixteenths of an inch in order to have the autofocus feature. If you're looking to get into an extremely small opening, they do have a 3.9 millimeter camera. It's a single lens only. Because of the small size, you cannot fit the circuitry for the double camera or dual camera. Not only can you choose the diameter and the type of camera setup, but you also could choose the length of the cable. Right here you can see the dual lens camera on the side. The lens is right there. Over here is the bright LED chip. When you switch between the two cameras, the LEDs are going to switch between the side and the end. Many inspection cameras that are sold include a mirror like you see right here. This little tiny inspection mirror. It goes right on the end, so the light shines against the mirror. And the problem with this setup is you can see what's going on, but the image is poor because you do get a glare on that mirror from the light. And it's also not a quality mirror. It's made out of plastic, so you're not going to get high quality at a right angle looking through this mirror. It also restricts some of your field of view. This camera here shows you everything super clear with that bright LED light. If you have a dual lens camera set up, all you have to do is push this button right here when the unit is powered up. You'll be able to switch between both cameras. In order to power up the unit, you simply hold this button down until you see the display come on and then you let go. Right here I have the camera focused on something off to the side. To switch to video, you're going to press M. And you can see over here, if you want, you can flip the image upside down. But unfortunately, this unit does not let you do mirror image left and right like the older unit. And I'm surprised because this is a lot more money than the other unit. Just the up and down. Now to switch to the files to see what you saved, you push the M and hold it. And here's a picture that I took. And you can go up and down to look at the different files. So let's go back to picture taking. And if you wanted to freeze this, you just push the OK button. Now that's frozen. And you could look at it more carefully. If the camera moves, it's not going to have any effect on the image. And there we are, unfrozen. When you take a picture with this unit, you want to make sure the camera is as steady as possible. Because if it moves, you're going to end up with motion blur and a very poor quality image. Now the images that you get when you do the snapshots on this one, as well as the old one, and another one that I've tried, they really don't give you a super sharp image. So let's take a look at the different settings. So I push this right here. OK. Now there's only one setting. And this setting you see here is for the image. It's not for the video. It's going to give you a 1920 by 1080 JPEG file. And you could do shutter sound on off all right date stamp and let's just go back i believe it's that one yep auto power off you could choose i have mine set for 10 minutes you could choose let's see how many different languages eight different languages there's six right here and if we go down two more Let's exit out of here. Date and time, format. Okay. 
if I want to delete everything and I'm going to do no cancel in the event you have an issue you can put the camera back to a default setting and down here I think it's just the version from 2020 all right so if you want to record a video you just push this button here M push that once and down here you can see the recording going on camera's bobbling around because of my desk and when you want to stop it just push right here you want to view it push the M now this unit also includes audio so you're able to record audio while you're recording video and that's perfect if you're an inspector you want to take notes as you're performing an inspection so you can go back to them later so let me play this back and you'll hear it very clear now if you want to speed up the video while it's playing to go backwards or forward just use the up and down arrows and you'll see times two times four times eight as you're jumping around in the video turning on the light you just push the button it's going to go the brightest first and then it goes medium low and then off even though you're going to see the level of brightness on the video as you push the button it would have been nice to have this symbol either at the bottom or at the top showing the setting for the brightness that you're on so low to high the NTS 500 is designed to give you a clear image when you're between one inch and four inches away from the area that you're inspecting so 25 millimeters up to 100 this camera here from the older units designed to give you a clearer image 40 millimeters away from the target area and beyond what I want to do now is quickly show you comparisons at different distances between the new camera and the old. Here you can see at one inch the NTS 500 is super clear and the older camera is out of focus. The NTS 500 is still very clear and the older camera is getting just a little bit clearer but still out of focus. I'm going to insert this into the engine of my vehicle. slowly go into the spark plug hole and you can see the spark plug threads very clearly now we're going to go in towards the top of the piston now I'm going to push the button to switch to the side camera and look at how clear that is you can see the Hyundai emblem on the valve very clearly with some writing and if we look around you can see there's some carbon deposits the image quality is so good that if you look at the cylinder walls above the piston you can even see the crosshatch pattern. So the side camera is excellent for looking inside the cylinder and the front camera is perfect for looking at the threads as you're entering into the cylinder. Right here using the old unit with the 90 degree mirror you can see there's a huge difference in the quality. Now we're going to take a look inside the exhaust system. Go all the way in towards the end of the muffler. Now I'm going to switch to the side camera. see how clear all the openings are inside that pipe. Now the last thing I'm going to do is take a look inside of a 40 caliber barrel. As the camera slides in you can see the rifling, that spiral look, and if we go all the way in to the firing pin you can see how clear that looks. So you get a good idea of how well this would work as a bore scope. As you just saw in multiple demonstrations, the image quality for this unit is definitely good. So I have to say it's a pretty good unit, but is it worth two and a half to three times as much as the other unit? That's up for you to decide. Thanks for watching.